Hi guys, welcome back to our Exit Automation Reporting Systems and Exit Automation Test Harness System course. And in this new section, we'll be talking about building Exit Automation Reporting Web Services, which is built on the top of WCF. So in this video, we will be talking about the introduction of building EA Reporting Web Services. So as you can see, right now we have a new logo, which is kind of this, the black color. It's actually a service, a web service. So we're going to build this. Once again, you can see that PowerShell and Pickle is kind of disabled. And the reason is because we will not be discussing about these two technologies in this section. All right, so let's get started. Why WCF Web Services suddenly? What are we going to do with a WCF Web Services, first of all? Well, WCF Web Services is a framework for building service-oriented application. Using WCF, you can send data as a asynchronous message from one service endpoint to another. A service endpoint can be a part of continuously available service hosted by Internet Information Server, or it can be a service hosted in an application. An endpoint can be a client of a service that requests the data from a service endpoint. So that's the theoretical definition of what WCF is all about. So it is going to be a framework for building service oriented application. And that's what we'll be doing in our course this time. So we're going to make use of our WCF to make a N tier architecture. So before going to the N tier architecture, let's first discuss what is this three tier architecture we have existingly in our Exit Automation Reporting System UI as well as with the help of Exit Automation Reporting Server database. So we have something like this. We have a client or the Exit Automation Framework or a custom framework to consume the Exit Automation Reporting Database where you will be inserting a data into the Exit Automation Reporting Database and the same data you will be looking using Exit Automation Reporting System UI. So as of now, we have not used any client, rather we directly inserted it, the data into the SQL Server Management Studio and the data was inserted into the database and we saw the report from the Exit Automation Reporting System UI. That's what we did. And instead of inserting the data from the SQL Server Management Studio, you can also insert the data via Exit Automation Framework or with a custom framework. But we have not discussed any of that so far in this course. We will be doing it uh, in a few minutes. But this is kind of pain because you have to write your own custom code to insert the data into the Exit Automation Reporting System by either calling the stored procedures or the query to insert the data into the database. And then the data will be visible in our Exit Automation Reporting System UI. But what if this, if your company has so many people and there is so many changes happening into your reporting system UI and your DBA thinks that there is some logic to be changed in the data insertion part where they don't have to specify the machine name which is a parameter in our short procedure. Or if your database administrator thinks that he want to add two or three more fields, which is kind of mandatory, and it has to be changed across all the people who are using your Exit Automation reporting system. So while that's the case, then you also have to change the code in the client, which is nothing but your Exit Automation framework and in your custom framework. But instead of doing the whole logic change in your client directly, you can make it as a service or otherwise called as an entire architecture, something like this, where you will have a Exit Automation WCF web service hosted in the middle of your Exit Automation reporting system and Exit Automation database, where you can see that this particular web service will act as a contract between your actual implementation to the caller or nothing but the client. So now if there is any change happening, the whole change is going to be happened in the web service itself directly. So if it's going to happen, then your code or the client will be intimated instantly that there is a change in the implementation. So the people or the client which is consuming this particular web service, if you refresh the web service references, it will tell you that there is some change in the implementation and you have to make the change as defined by your DBA or by your Exit Automation Reporting System team. So right now, to be more clear and precise, this is the thing. With your existing three-tier architecture, 
Any change happening in the Exit Automation Reporting System or Exit Automation Reporting System database will not be notified to the client automatically. You as a client have to be notified by yourself. You have to either go to the database and verify what is the change or you have to check with, with your team of the changes. But if you write as a Exit Automation Web Service, then any change happen will be reflected in the Exit Automation Web Service as well. And the consuming client, it can be a Exit Automation Framework or a custom framework, will also be automatically notified if refresh the web service reference in your project. So we will be using our Exit Automation Web Service to perform the operation. And what are the other kind of advantages that the Exit Automation Web Service has compared to your existing directly writing the code? Very, very simple. The main advantage is you don't have to write even a single line of actual implementation of code of how the data has to be inserted into the database. You just have to consume the Azure Automation Web Service into your project and pass the parameter as you do for your stored procedure query as a parameter and then the rest will be taken care of by your Exit Automation Web Service. So let's get started then and understand what I really mean in this presentation.